The Penguins hand out a contract yesterday to Alex Nedeljkovic. Two and a half million bucks for a couple of years. And while Nedeljkovic, for a stretch down the stretch, was very good, it also appeared to me that he petered out at the end. You got everything you could get out of that guy. In no world should you be paying Tristan Jari and Alex Nedeljkovic a combined $8 million. Not when going into that move, you only had $13 million in salary cap space. You now have $11 million bucks, and you're paying two goalies $8 million. They have to be trading Tristan Jari, do they not? Yeah, that's the, that's the conversation. Like, that's what they're telling us. And Joel Bloom, Bloomquist, I guess, is the guy that uh, they're hoping can make a jump and maybe be that number two. I don't know what the whole situation is, or maybe they go get somebody. I, I don't know, but I, I do know almost for certain that Tristan Jari is going to be on his way. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't make this move, and especially what Dubas said about Nedeljkovic at the end of the season almost came at him. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And in the, his last ten games, by the way, Joel Bloomquist, who's a, a big time prospect for the Penguins in the playoffs, had a nine uh, nine two eleven save percentage, uh, ninety two save percentage, which is really good, mm-hmm. obviously. And they said they were going to pay attention to what he did in the playoffs right. to see if he'd be ready for this year. Uh, he he did not really praise Nedeljkovic, you're no. right, all that much. But if it would make a ton of sense to me if you're, you wouldn't be paying Blomquist a lot of money, and if you platoon him and Nedeljkovic, like 40-ish games, and then as Blomquist gets better and gets more, you know, gets used to the mm. NHL level, if you want to start giving him more starts down the stretch, that makes sense. It's actually a way they could they could create more salary cap yeah. space for themselves. Right. Is Nedeljkovic fades away into your number two goalie over the course of the year, but he's a 1A, 1B thing at the beginning of the year. If you trade Jari, that's $5.375 million off the books. Another guy that they're going to consider trading, definitely consider trading, is Riley Smith. Yes. But I think – we'll get to that coming up in a second here because there's something Yoey wrote yesterday. i got to find it here. Um, players that – that the Penguins are trying to move and they're looking at acquiring. But I think there would actually oddly be a market for Jari because, look, he's not healthy. He's played nine playoff games. Those playoff games have not been good. But when he's healthy in the regular season, he's generally a pretty good goalie. He's a multiple-time Mm All-Star. And I think if you're a goalie star franchise and you think, okay, we've got crap, or we could go with the guy who's not crap and not really breaking the bank from a goalie standpoint, salary cap wise. I, I do think he, you're not going to get a lot for him, but you could move on from him. There will be takers. And I don't know that you need to bring in you know, AHL tweener prospects, or I don't know that you need to bring in a third line center. I don't know that that's realistic, but I think we've seen all that we need to see with Jari here. And so I do think it would be a little bit addition by subtraction Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. moving on from Tristan Jari. Yeah. And I know that Sullivan has purportedly and reportedly really liked the guy, but he didn't like him enough to play him down the stretch last year. That is true too. People are texting in and saying Eddie Murphy. Yes. Has aged well. He has. Yes. Does Eddie Murphy get enough credit for his role of donkey and Shrek? No, he doesn't need it because he just has so many. I mean, he might be one of the most gifted actors of all time. Yes. Like gifted wise. I mean, he played he played in a movie and there was about five characters in the movie and he played all the characters. Yes. In the clumps. Mm-hmm. Like that's gifted. One of the best stand up comedians of all time. Stand up. And he's an excellent actor. Some of these stand up guys, they go in, stand up ladies, they go in. And like Sarah Silverman, right? Is she a good actress? No. Is she funny? Absolutely. He was both. Is both. Uh huh. Eddie Murphy, all time. This from Josh Yoey in the Athletic. Gensel is not returning to Raleigh. He writes, "Is there a chance he could return to Pittsburgh?" I recently spoke with a person close to Gensel and granted them anonymity so they could speak freely. The verdict: Gensel would love to return to Pittsburgh, and there's a chance it happens, but only a small chance. Wow. I don't want to out <laughs> Yoey here, but I'll, I'll say what I know. 
Jake Gensel's brother <laughs> was out texting everyone when and, and DMing everyone when Jake was traded to Carolina. Like he was blowing everyone up. Jake is pissed, yada, yada, yada. Kind of became the anonymous source for everybody. Now, he didn't DM me, so I have no problem airing him out like this. So I don't know that that's who Josh is talking to. Josh is absolutely tapped in in a way that not a lot of beat writers are. Like I think Josh is as good a beat writer for his respective sport as there is in the city and as there probably is in the country. So it might not be coming from Gensel's brother, but it also might be coming from Gensel's brother. And so what I'm telling you is if Yoey is reporting there is a chance, there is a chance. Yeah. Would you like that? I would love that, but for the right price. I mean, what's he going to command? Eight to ten. And what do they have now? Eleven. <sighs> But that's where you got to move on from Riley Smith. That's where you got to move on from Jari. From Tristan Jari. And if you move on from Riley Smith, he's five mil. Tristan Jari. You can get an extra $10 million in cap space with just those two departures. That would make up there the money go. that you need for Jake Gensel. I would do that and in a, a heartbreak, and a second. heartbeat. Second. Because then you think about it. And you got bunting. Like, I mean, yes. you, you kind of almost swindled the whole process. They didn't. Th so they, they got what, a second round pick now for, for Gensel? Because they didn't make it to the they, Yeah, cup. they didn't win the cup. Yeah. If they would have won the cup, they would have got a first-round pick. So you got a second-round pick out of it. If you could get Genzel back at $10 million, and then you got bunting as well. All Not of bad. a sudden, you're deeper. You've got Crosby's preferred winger back. Bunting and Malkin look good together. Not bad. Malkin played a lot better hockey whenever he had bunting on his wing. And then Drew O'Connor can kind of be your floater guy. For sure. I, I don't hate that at all. And, man, this is so tough because... Would Jake come for a little bit of a discount when this is his only opportunity to really cash in? Well, then that's where you rely on Crosby trying to sway him to come back. for the Yes. Moment. Yes. Or Crosby's, Crosby's up for a deal, right? Yes. And Yoey wrote about that, too. That I could see Crosby, though, being like, listen, oh, I'll take it a little point. bit less. For Gensel, if you bring him back. I could see him doing that. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but I could see him. I mean, if that's his boy. You know and what? he wants a back, uh, listen, I'll sacrifice some of mine. For you. 